Hey friends, there is nothing quite like a Maui sunset. Here I am on the Ka'anapali Beach in Maui, Hawaii on my vacation. I want to share today the 14 stocks that I just sold that comprise 15% of my portfolio's value. In my last video, you may remember it, I shared three of the stocks that I sold. I shared Apple, 3M, and Colgate, but I received some comments. Hey, Ian, could you share the rest, please? And so, yes, I am. I'm going to do that in the video today. My patrons already know all the stocks. I'll link to my Patreon in the pinned comment below. But right now, I want to share it here on YouTube, the 14 stocks that I sold to fund our real estate investment. So the first one is Apple. I just want to reiterate that stock. It actually comprised 4.5% of my portfolio's value. I sold my shares at $177.93. Now, the reason that I sold Apple, as shared in the last video, is it comprised a large percentage of my portfolio. I had enjoyed large capital gains, but the dividend yield, it was rather low. And so I decided to sell Apple because when I have a smaller portfolio, I have a portfolio that is only 85% of its former size, it made sense to eliminate a stock that was comprising such a large percentage of portfolio value, but contributing such a small amount of the cash flow. Now, would I buy Apple back? Absolutely. In the future, when funds permit, as I go ahead and I reestablish the portfolio, as I build it brick by brick, I would probably buy Apple shares again. Now, worth noting, before I do that, I'm actually stacking SCHD. So I shared that also on my Patreon. I'll have a link in the pinned comment below. I initiated a position in SCHD and I plan to build that brick by brick before I probably add too many more net new positions, I want that to form the base of my portfolio. Now, the next stock that I sold by position weight, it was 3M, and so I already shared this. It was 3.4% of portfolio value. I sold my 3M shares at $100.96. Now that I sold, it will probably promptly go up in value, I'm sure. But um, that's just how things work. The reason I sold 3M is it was an underperformer and when I need to sell off 15% of my portfolio by value, if I did not sell 3M, I would have had to sell something else of higher perceived quality and I just couldn't bring myself to do that. Hence, I went ahead and sold 3M. Now, would I buy this stock back in the future after I've stacked my SCHD, after I've kind of reestablished that missing 15% with SCHD, um, would I buy it back? I don't know. Um, it's kind of more of a maybe for me. I see clear value there, but I've also suffered a lot of pain over the years on 3M with some capital losses. And so I'm not so sure, but I would put it on the maybe list. Let me keep going. The third stock that I sold to fund our real estate investment by uh, value, it was Colgate. And so again, I, I shared that in the last video. That was 1.4% of the portfolio's value. And I sold it at $75.44. Now, Colgate, it was uh, fairly, if not overvalued, but uh, the reason I really sold Colgate is I have other positions in the portfolio, like Procter & Gamble. I have other positions like Unilever. I have other positions like Clorox that all fill that gap in CPG. I used to be called CPGE, and I have a lot of CPG stocks, so I just didn't need Colgate, strategically speaking, in a portfolio that's 85% of its former value. It just wasn't a gap that I needed to fill. I almost had too much CPG, and so that was one of the main reasons I sold it, but also I felt that it was um, fairly, if not overvalued. Would I buy Colgate back? Probably not. Strategically speaking, I don't need it, but I do love their international exposure to emerging markets. They're the best in that game. So the next stock that I sold, number four on the list was Alphabet or Google, ticker G-O-O-G-L. I sold at $122.63. It comprised 1.3% of my portfolio's value. It paid no dividend. Now, I think in some point in the future, maybe they will pay a dividend. I cannot afford to wait around for that in a smaller portfolio value. For me, strategically speaking, it was really easy to eliminate the non-dividend payers. Would I buy Alphabet back at this point? Probably not for a long time. First, I want to build SCHD. Then maybe I'll add back one or two of the ones I had to sell, like Apple, um, maybe in a smaller quantity. But would I add back Alphabet? Probably not. It was one of those kind of collection stocks. I love it. 
I had a small gain on it, I believe, if I remember correctly, but I just don't see them paying a dividend anytime soon. And I'm all about cash flow now. I need cash flow more than ever. I need the smaller portfolio to do more work um, even than before, because there is fewer capital that I need to drive more cash flow via dividends. And so that was the fourth stock that I sold. The fifth stock that I sold was Air Products and Chemicals, ticker APD. I sold at $283.61. It formerly comprised 0.8% of the portfolio. The reason I sold this one, honestly, is I felt it was fairly valued, maybe a little bit overvalued, and I just wanted to kind of lock in the gain. Uh, being in the chemicals industry, with all of the risk, the single company risk that is out there in the marketplace these days, I felt like probably I don't need that risk in my portfolio. I got a sizable gain. I felt it was kind of fairly, if not overvalued. I felt that um, it was really a function of, of just that. It was uh, locking in the gains on something that had run up a lot. Would I buy APD back? Probably not. Maybe I would put it on the maybe list if I saw value there, but it's very rare that that one trades on discount. So I want to keep going. By the way, if you want to learn the backstory about why I sold all these stocks, what's going on, check out the pinned comment below. It is in my last video. But today I'm just trying to go through the 14 positions I sold because a lot of you wanted to know and you wanted to know a little bit about how I decided which ones to sell. So the next one, um, number six, was Leggett and Platt, ticker LEG. I sold it at $32.75. It formerly comprised 0.7% of the portfolio. I sold this one because I have a perception that it's a company of lower quality. They're having a hard time covering their dividend. They're um, facing some challenges with their payout ratio. And in a smaller portfolio, I cannot afford to comprise on quality at all. So I have a perception it's at, of lower quality. It was an easy one to sell. Would I buy Leggett back? Probably not. That's not one that I will probably be adding back in my future as a dividend investor. So I want to keep going. The next one that I sold, number seven, was um, surprisingly enough, Marriott Vacations Worldwide, ticker VAC. It's $132.13 where I sold it, and it comprised 0.6% of the portfolio. One, you're starting to see here, I'm selling off a lot of the smaller positions just to streamline my life. With the new real estate investment, things are a little more complex. There's uh, more to think about in our financial picture. And so any simplicity I can derive in the dividend portfolio is a really helpful. And so I'm selling off a lot of the smaller positions you can see other than the first three that I shared, but also why I sold Marriott Vacations Worldwide is it's kind of a collection stock. I bought it because I wanted it in the collection, but when the portfolio gets smaller, I don't have room for collection stocks, just kind of for fun stocks. I have to prioritize the stocks that add real dividend cash flow that I can use to pay the bills. Let me keep going. The next one was another collection stock, number eight. It was Dutch Bros, ticker BROS. I sold it $29.80. It only comprised half a percent of the portfolio. Again, this was an easy call because it was a collection stock. It was an easy call because it pays no dividend. And it was an easy call because I have built up my position in Starbucks really large. I also have a massive position in Coca-Cola. Both of those pay a massive, or not massive, but reasonably nice dividend. It's massive to me because those positions are so big in my portfolio. But I looked at my overall exposure to coffee, and especially because I already have exposure to coffee, I didn't need that. But also, I didn't need uh, bros because it's a collection stock that pays a no dividend. And so I sold that one, and it's a small position to boot. It frees up mind share. I don't have to spend mind share managing that position that's only half a percent in the portfolio. So the next one that I sold is number nine. It is Viatris, ticker VTRS. I sold it at $9.71. It only comprised 0.4% of the portfolio. I sold this one really because I have adequate exposure to healthcare. I have Johnson & Johnson, which is a huge position, Pfizer, which is a huge position, AbbVie, which is a huge position. It was a sector allocation play, and I kept the higher quality stocks within that sector. I decided I just didn't need this being a smaller position, being a lower quality company within that sector. That being said, I am selling at a discounted price, I believe. I did sell at a value price where I felt like it was undervalued. Was it a did I achieve a great um, kind of value for my shares? 
no, I did not. And so it was one of those hard ones to sell, kind of like 3M from that particular perspective. But you can see the logic that goes through my mind. I had to raise a certain amount of capital. I had to sell 15%. When I was going through the portfolio and choosing what to sell, I used a lot of different criteria. And so you're seeing my thought process in real time here, the different criteria that I used and how it all played out mentally, because it was not easy. It was not easy, but I'm excited to build it back mainly through SCHD going forward just to simplify my life. Because like I said, with the real estate transaction, life gets a little more complex. So any simplicity I can add, it always helps. So the next stock that I want to cover today that I sold was number 10. This was a really easy sell. It was Danone, ticker D-A-N-O-Y. Um, I sold at $11.87. It was only 0.3% of the portfolio. When something is that small in the portfolio, it is so easy to make the selection. It just frees up mind share. But also Danone, it really has not done much for me in all the years that I've owned it. It's been an underperformer. And so it was a um, easier one to sell. Just a complete underperformer all these years. But I do wish anyone who owns Danone all the best. And I have other international stocks that I own that I believe are of higher quality like Unilever. And so Danone, it just did not make sense in the portfolio. I have other CPG food stocks like Campbell's Soup, General Mills, just didn't need to have Danone when I am trying to eliminate 15%, and uh, especially those in the portfolio that have been underperformers for me, uh, or of lower quality, or overvalued. There were a lot of criteria as I shared in the last video. So the next one, uh, number 11, this is one I absolutely would love to buy back at some point. Now I had to sell it because it's only 0.3% of the portfolio, but it's Chubb. I sold it at $191.91. Chubb was a hard sale because I love the company. It's a solid performer. I'm under allocated to financials, although SCHD has a lot of financial exposure. And so I plan to build up and make up some of my underrepresent underrepresentation in my individual stocks via that ETF. But I gotta say it was hard to sell Chubb I would say that's the one I want to buy back other than Apple. Those are probably the two I've described so far that I look forward at some point to buying back as long as they're trading at reasonable, if not um, undervalued levels. So the next one that I sold, number 12, was Church & Dwight. CHD, I sold at $93.63. It was only 0.3% of the portfolio. The reason I sold this one is in the recent years, I bought it as a rapid dividend grower. And historically, the dividend had grown a lot. But in recent years, it had disappointed me. The dividend growth has slowed uh, really a lot. But at the same time, it's trading at a premium multiple. And so I have other CPG stocks in my portfolio that offer more current yield, comparable dividend growth. And I don't need to be over allocated to the CPG sector, especially to something that is slowing dividend growth, but has a low um, yield to begin with. And so I love the company. I think it has a lot of promise, but that was my rationale with Church and Dwight. And to boot, it's a small position taking up mind share. So the next one that I sold, this was a tough one other than um, Apple and uh, Chubb. I wanna buy this one back but it was only 0.3% of the portfolio. I sold it $49.10. It was Alimentation Couche Tard, A-N-C-T-F. This was a tough one. It's a Canadian stock. I love the company, international position. Um, I wanna buy it back. I don't really have a good reason that I sold other than it is really small and created overhead in the portfolio. Didn't add a lot of impact because of its small size, but it's a really rapid dividend grower. I think they will continue to do that. It has not let me down as long as I held it. It's a growth, kind of a tried and true dividend growth stock out of Canada. They own Circle K convenience stores. I love the company. I would like to buy that back um, at some point if it trades at a reasonable valuation. And so of everything I discussed, it's really Apple Chubb, Alimentation, Couchard. The last one I wanna share today, rounding up the lot is Hormel, ticker HRL. I sold it at $40.54. It only comprised 0.2% of the portfolio. I have CPG food already with General Mills, with Campbell's Soup, with uh, PepsiCo. I just did not need to have Hormel at 0.2% allocation. Um, I probably wouldn't buy that one back, but it's a solid company, a great company. I miss owning it a little bit, but um, that's where I'm at. That's all 14 stocks that I sold that comprise 15% of the portfolio. I did it to fund a real estate transaction. Now you all know which ones I sold and you have a little more insight and information why I sold each of these 15 stocks. Put in the comments below what you think about these stocks. Would you have sold them, held them, um, 
bought more of them, let me know in the comments below. So um, that's what I did. But now as I rebuild, it's all about focus on SCHD and uh, individual stocks here and there as well. Now, implicitly, most of you know my portfolio. And so you now know probably what I did not sell as well. But I'll probably do another video next because um, I do want to share with all of you some of the stocks that I did not sell because there's some on the list today like Utz Brands Inc. For example, I did not sell that one. And so there are certain stocks that you might think, oh, Ian, would have you sold those? But I went ahead, I held on to them. And uh, so we'll talk more about that in the next video. If you enjoyed the video today, please go ahead and smash that like button. It means the world to me, truly. I'm here on vacation in the beautiful Ka'anapali Beach in Maui, Hawaii, enjoying the sunset. Um, doing my thing uh put in the comments below if you've been around here since the early days when i used to do these videos og style here on ppc ian from maui hawaii i would love to um, know if you've been around that long it means the world to me and uh, don't forget to subscribe i have new videos on the way all the time i'll say overall with the stock sales it was a little bit painful to do what i did but i also feel now with my portfolio just a little more streamlined i feel like there's a little bit of pressure off on managing so many positions. And that really matters for me right now because I'm taking on a lot with our um, real estate investment that adds more complexity. So I have more complexity elsewhere, less complexity in the dividend stocks, maybe the same complexity overall. But it's all about, as you get older in life, trying to think about ways at least not to make sure the complexity gets too out of hand or too crazy, too difficult to manage um, in life. And so... Really, everyone, I love you all. I really appreciate you watching the video. Um, in terms of full disclosure, I mentioned a bunch of stocks that I own today. I don't know if I'm gonna remember all of them here on the beach, but I'm gonna try to uh, list them now. The ones I don't list, I'll put in a screenshot on the screen, but I'm long PepsiCo, ticker PEP, General Mills, GIS, Campbell's Soup, CPB. I'm long Unilever, UL. Um, what else? Procter & Gamble, PG, um, the uh, Charles Schwab uh, Dividend ETF, SCHD. That's a new one that I own. I own Starbucks, SBUX, Coca-Cola, KO, Johnson & Johnson, J&J, &J, uh, Pfizer, PFE, AbbVie, ABBV. I own all of those in my personal dividend stock port. Folio. Before I go today, in terms of a friendly disclaimer, today's video, it's not investment advice. I'm not a licensed investment advisor. I'm just sharing my journey here on YouTube for fun and entertainment. If you're going to go out and invest in the stock market or anywhere else, please consult your licensed financial advisor. First, I'm just sharing my journey here on YouTube for fun and entertainment. You guys have seen me over the years. I have um, evolved as an investor. I've changed as an investor. I'm always learning. I love what I do. And um, share in the comments below any of the lessons you've learned over the years. Have you kind of ever bought a lot of stocks and then trimmed down the portfolio to build it back a little more simplified? Or do you just go all out on all the collection stocks and own a lot of stocks? In my opinion, there's no one right way to do it. I'm just sharing the way that it works for me and how I evolve as an investor, but certainly not investment advice and just sharing my journey as I go. I love you all. I will see you in the next dividend stock investing video and i'll also see you in the comments section below